All right, and welcome to the TSG Multimedia Video Podcast. This is John standing here with Dan, and we're standing at the what is this? I guess it's the north end of the Santa Clara Caltrain station. Yeah, and we decided to do something different this time. I've heard that before. This time we're going to run a little comparison between a Nikon DSLR taking high definition video and the Canon XA10. So my hypothesis or my guess is that the Nikon is going to look better. And I, I say that for a number of reasons which I might get into later. But So we've got Dan's Nikon set up there. It's a, by the way, it's a, it's a Nikon D7100. Oh, right. That's and, good to know. And it has a, an 18 to 140 zoom lens on it. This is just a stock XA10, and I, but I did put a polarizer on the lens to help bring out some more of the color and to reduce some of the glare, like off the top of the rails. So we've got them set up to very similar shots here, framing-wise, and we're just going to wait for a train to come by. And while we're waiting, Dan, why don't you talk a little bit about how you set up yours, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I set up mine. Okay, well, um, the the Nikon, it works kind of like a, you, a regular SLR. Um, you know, you have to adjust your f-stop and your focus and um, the ISO and your frame rate, which is only for video, of course. Um, uh, one of the things I've learned with, with all cameras that I've used for video, especially with action stuff like trains, is it's best to use it in full manual mode because it, uh, moving things across the screen tend to confuse the uh, autofocus and it also tends to confuse um, the iris or f-stop, meaning that if you have like something like a freight train going by that has light cars and dark cars, then it'll constantly be adjusting the exposure every time a different car rolls into the frame, and that looks really bad. You end up with this kind of oscillating looking picture, and it's really bad. So um, basically I set it up, uh, it's pretty bright out here right now, so I've got it uh, at f13, which is a relatively small lens opening. Um, got it at 30 frames per second, and the ISO is at 100. So it should be a pretty good quality shot. I also have a polarizer on the lens. Uh, the lens has a, a 67 millimeter opening on the uh, far end. So, um, and it's a DX lens. Uh, this camera uses the Nikon uh, DX lenses. So um, anyway, uh, pretty much uh, I also have the white balance set for sunlight. Um, this thing, uh, I don't have it on right now, but I don't know if you can see this, probably uh, may not show up too well. But anyway, it's, there's a lot of menu choices back here to set the white balance and ISO and all that. And you can also do some of that on screen. And then when you want to shoot video, it has this little button here you press. And it opens it up and you see this um, a picture in here. And I don't know if this is showing up on the camera very well or not. I can't really tell because it's bright out here and the, hard to see what's on the monitor. But Our train's um, coming. Oh, a train's coming? A train's coming. We'll start the cameras now. And then after the train goes by, um, I'll talk a little bit about how I set the... Well, you know what? There's plenty of time. It's, it's off in the distance. So, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dan. Was that pretty much That's what a, you were going to say? That was pretty much all. Yeah, okay. that was pretty much done. So, similarly, I found that manual controls are the best for camcorders as well. And I set the white balance to sunlight as well. Uh, if we had time and we were doing something bigger and better, I'd have a white disc out here and we'd set it manually. But it would probably come up with about the same Kelvin setting uh, for color temperature. And then... I believe that this camera's. I didn't do anything to tweak the setting, so it's running on a fairly generic setting, you know, 30 frames per second and so forth. And I did change the uh, polarizer to, like I said before, to bring the blue out and to limit the glare off the rails. And uh, I also set it to manual focus. And. Oh. Set it to manual focus and to manual iris so that it doesn't blow up the picture. So anyway, I'm going to back up and here we'll oops, we'll uh, watch the train here too.
So as I was saying, I had it set to manual as well. And uh, now that the train came through, we're going to show the two video clips one after the other and kind of decide, you know, which one looks better. Yeah, it's be interesting to see. Yeah. So after reviewing the shots, I have to say that I'm very impressed with both of them. They both have great detail. Yeah, and I thought they both looked good. Yeah. In fact, I, I don't notice a, a whole lot of difference in image quality. Yeah, detail-wise, I don't think yeah. there was much. The, the only major difference I noticed was the warmth of the color in yeah. the uh, Canon compared to the other. And frankly, that's the reason why I have canon anyway because i've always liked that yeah. quality to their pictures so and you know um i do think i might have overexposed my shot a bit um and also you know depending on how i might have set my white balance i mean i just use the default sun setting uh you can tweak it a lot yeah. in that camera so that you know that they may have had something to do with it too so um you know overall both are really good though i think i'd be happy with either one yeah and I think you could use both on the same kind of a project, and it, it, I don't think anyone would really notice that you were shooting from two different kinds of cameras. Yeah, probably not. I, I was really worried, though, Dan. I, I was afraid that I was going to feel ripped off or something, that I had something, you know, the Canon wasn't going to be as good, but I'm satisfied that it's equally good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think they do a pretty good job. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, that'll do it for this video podcast make sure you check us out on our audio podcast on the 15th and then of course we'll be back again on the first of next month with our next video podcast please subscribe and thanks for watching yeah thanks